Okay, so pure free, um, chapter free, trigonometry. So we're going to learn about secant, co um, cosecant, and cotangent, okay, and their relationship to cosine, sine, and the tangent. We're going to come back to what we did in Pure 2 where we're manipulating trig identities and we're going to have a look at the reciprocal trigonometric functions, inverse trigonometric functions and understand the difference between the domain and range. So, first of all, we all know about cos. Okay, we should be happy with that. And then we know that cos squared x means cos of x all squared. That's what it means, okay? We, we had to look at that before. And then we know that cos of minus 1 means arc cos, okay? This doesn't mean the inverse. You, if you think about the laws of indices, okay? Uh, sorry, not the inverse, the reciprocal. If you think about the laws of indices, we know that 1 over x equals x to the minus 1. Okay, unfortunately, there was a historical mathematical accident. So cos to the minus 1 does not mean 1 over cos. It's the inverse of cos, isn't it? So, you know, when we have an equation and we want to find what x is, we, you know, how do we find x? Inverse cos, cos to the minus 1. So that's why we call this arc cos. Now, the inverse of cos... Okay, we represent it using a new word, and this is called sec. So sec of x equals 1 over cos. So then, sec of x equals 1 over cos, cosec of x equals 1 over sine, and cot of x equals 1 over tan of x, or cos over sine of x. And that's because tan of x equals sine over cos, or as I like to say, silly cow. Okay, tan, silly cow, sine over cos. All right, Farida gets a prize. So, have a look at the third letter. S, one over sine. Okay, on this one, T, what have we got? 1 over tan of x. Now remember, tan of x can be written as sine over cos, or as I like to remember, silly cow. Okay? But we don't like to write 1 over a fraction. Okay? So this actually is cos of x over sine of x. Does anyone not know how I got to that? Does anyone want me to explain why that works? Okay, and then sec, our third letter, is 1 over cos of x. Okay, we've got two ways of doing this. Number one, 1 over sin x over cos x. Okay, so we could multiply by cos x over cos x, because cos x over cos x is 1. When we multiply any number by 1, we still have the original number. Okay, We can manipulate this. It doesn't matter what we multiply by because cos x over cos x is 1. So my numerator becomes 1 times cos x, which is cos x. My denominator becomes sine of x cos x all over cos x. And these two are then going to cancel. So we're going to get cos of x over sine of x. Absolutely correct. Another way we could do this is, you know, that 1 divided by sine of cosec is, uh, so sine x over cos x is 1 divided by sine x over cos x. And do you remember from GCSE, whenever we divide by fractions, stay change flip? So then this becomes 1 multiplied by cos x over sine x, which is just cos x over sine x. It's really important that we know how to manipulate fractions. We understand why, because this is what we're going to be moving on to shortly. 
So, very quickly, we're just going to do a few questions. So, cot of pi over 4. If we were to work this out into our calculators, we know that cot is actually 1 over tan. So, this is going to be 1 over tan of pi over 4. Okay, if we're working in pies, make sure your calculator's in radians. Okay, I can put that in my calculator. I'm going to get 1. Sec of pi over 4 is 1 over cos of pi over 4, which is going to equal root 2. Cosec of pi over 3 is, in fact, 1 over sine pi over 3, 2 root 3 over 3. Cot of pi over 6 is, in fact, 1 over tan pi over 6, root 3. Cosec of 5 pi over 6 is actually going to be 1 over sine of 5 pi over 6. Two. Perfect. So we've got a few more questions, but I'm sure we're all quite comfortable working this out. So if we were to ask, uh, if we were to find this in an interval, okay, let's say zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to two pi, we would need to use the cast diagram to figure out what the following numbers could be. So that's what we're going to do on these questions here. Okay, so we're going to assume um, our interval is between zero is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to two pi. So, cot of pi over three, we know this is one over tan pi over 3. Okay? So, we're just going to work out tan pi over 3, and then we will go back and put 1 over the following answers. So, if I have my cast diagram, C-A-S-T. Okay? And if I was to use, make sure that I was in radians, and I find pi over 3, shift, oh, turn of over 3, I'm going to get root 3. So, my angle is root 3, I'm going to do this in a different colour actually. Okay, so here we go. So my angle is root 3, okay? The way I'm going to check, remember this is 0, this is pi, this is pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, and then we come back to 2 pi, okay? Now, what is root 3? If you put root 3 into your calculator, you get 1.73, roughly. If we put pi over 2 into our calculator we get 1.57. So in actual fact, our angle, root 3, isn't going to look like this, is it? No. Our angle, root 3, and this is really important that when... Sorry, it's very small rubber. It's really important that when we are using the cast diagram, we actually figure out what's going on and why. So root 3 is going to be roughly here, isn't it? So there's our angle, root 3. Okay, so then how do I now find the second angle? Is there a second angle? How would I find it? Normally, if we have an angle here, we'd reflect it in the tan. So if it's gone over here, we're going to reflect it in the cos. 
So this angle here is root 3. So that means we have two angles. We're going to have 1 over root 3 or 1 over, and this angle from here all the way around here is in fact pi plus root 3. So we're going to have pi plus root 3. Now you can put those into your calculator because we don't really like to have um, irrational numbers. Okay, and we don't want thirds on the denominator. So 1 over root 3 is going to be root 3 over 3. So it's 1 over root 3 because tan of pi over 3 is root 3. But remember, we're still trying to figure out cot. So it's 1 over tan. Okay, question four, five, and six. If you could do them for tomorrow's lesson, please. So, everyone should be happy drawing y equals sine of x. Okay. Now, as we said, um, what we're going to do is when we reciprocate each y value, what's actually happening? Okay, so let's go through individually. So, we're going to draw the graph of y equals cosec. Okay, but we know that cosec of x equals 1 over sine x. Okay, so if we think the y value here is roughly a half, the y coordinate of that point is roughly a half. What happens when I do 1 over a half? What do I get? Two. So this point is now going to be, if this is two, it's going to be roughly here, isn't it? Okay. How about this point? Let's say this is a quarter. What is one over a quarter? One over a quarter. Four. So that's going to be like up here somewhere, isn't it? Okay. How about this point? This point's three quarters. What's one over three quarters? It's about, it's four over three, so it's going to be less than two. It's going to be about here. Okay, how about this point? In this point, my y coordinate is in fact one. What's one over one? Ah, it's going to be here. What do you think is going to happen to the rest of the graph if we carry on like this? It is a bit like a reflection, absolutely. So what our graph is going to look like is and then and we're also going to have a reciprocal line because at our x coordinate where we have pi our y coordinate is 0 and 1 divided by 0 is undefined so that's why we have a reciprocal so we're going to have a reciprocal every pi every time our curve touches the x-axis when x equals 0 we will have a reciprocal so we're also going to have a reciprocal here perfect Okay, so again, as you know, sometimes my drawings aren't amazing. So we do like to have um, a drawing for you. So you can see we've got our reciprocal lines. Okay, and again, we cannot divide by zero. That's why we get an asymptote. Our domain, x can never equal plus or minus pi, plus or minus two pi. I like to write... And sometimes it'll ask you to do this when drawing. X can never equal plus or minus a pi. Okay, so this is where a belongs to the integers. So, I want you to try and have a go now at sketching sec of x. 
Can you sketch sec of x, please? So, we definitely know that we're going to have some asymptotes wherever the curve touches, crosses the x-axis. And then again, it's going to go up like this. Going to touch there like this. It's going to get like so here we have our domain and range. You can see it needs to be every odd number. One over two pi. If we did two over two pi, it's a whole pi. So for the asymptote, we need to do every odd number. Okay, so you know, remember an odd number we could write as two n plus one. This will always be odd. Remember when we did proof? Yeah? Okay, where n, um, where our value n belongs to integers. How about one, um, how about cot x? Do you think you could give a, have a go at that? Cot x. How could you draw that? Okay, so a clue with this one, remember, wherever the actual curve crosses the x-axis when y equals zero, we know that's where our new asymptote's going to be. So we have an asymptote here. We're going to have asymptote here, and we know we're going to have an asymptote on this axis. And then again, <clears throat> think about the y values. Okay, and what happens to them when we do one over them? So for example, if this was 0 0.5, it's now going to be 2. If this was 1, this is now going to be 1. Okay, and what we're going to find is actually... we go slightly backwards, okay? So our graph's going to look like this. So here you go. So it's the pink line you're looking at. Where there was an asymptote, that's going to be our new area of crossing. Okay? And y does not equal any multiple of, any even multiple no, it's any multiple of pi, because it has um, a period every pi. Okay? Okay, so here's an example. Sketch the graph of y equals 4 cosec x between minus pi is less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to pi. Okay, so part A. We need between minus pi and pi. So I'm going to make sure that I draw my x and my y going to be pi over 2 pi minus pi over 2 minus pi. Now I'm going to use a highlighter to just very lightly highlight. I know cosec is actually 1 over sine. Okay? So think about my sine graph. Okay? And if I have a look, it says 4 lots. It's multiplied by the function, so this affects the y coordinate. So we're actually stretching the graph out. So instead of normally, if you think if we had sine, it looks like this, and it's between 1 and minus 1, 4 lots. So it's now going to be between 4 and minus 4. Okay? So if I was just to draw sine, There's my sign, okay? And I'm just drawing it faintly. I always like to do that. Okay, but if I think I now need to... I'm just going to draw it smaller. Okay, because I know that when I do my cosec, it's going to look slightly different. So now when I draw my actual graph, I know that this point is going to be at 4, and here is at minus 4. Remember, you can have asymptotes. Okay, 
please make sure you draw the asymptotes you won't get full marks and then you're going to draw the graph and make sure it touches at the maximum okay perfect there we go that's what it looks like okay and remember this point here is the point pi over 2 4 pi over 2 is about 1.3 isn't it 1.34 so we've drawn the graph amazing it then says on the same axes sketch the line y equals x now this is where we have to really be careful about how we plot this because Pi is roughly 3.14, yeah? And this is 4, so I cannot just do a line that looks like this, even though that our line y equals x normally, when we think of the line y equals x, we would draw it like this. This only works if my x-axis goes up at the same width as my y-axis. In this case, it doesn't, okay? So really think about it. If this is 1.7, this is roughly 1, 1, 2, 3, this will be roughly 1, okay? So then this will be y equals x. Really just think about what's going on. Then if you think, where's 2 going to be? About here. So you can see our gradient doesn't look quite like y equals x, but it is, okay? And then you're going to draw a straight line. Try your hardest. And this is the problem with sketches sometimes. It's very difficult to see what's going on. So, okay. Right, there's my line y equals x. Now, I need to check if this is right. Because currently, if I state the number of solutions to the equation. Solutions to this equation, if you look here, it's where they intersect because four cosec x equals x and y equals x, y equals this. So you can see they've used both equations and they've put them equal to each other rearranged. Personally, I would say there's no solutions because I cannot see it intersecting between the values of minus pi and pi from my sketch. But it's always good to double check. So let's really think, okay, the highest it's going to is pi, which is about 3, isn't it? Okay, so we know that pi is 3.14, so just before it is 3. Okay, so 3 will be roughly here. So it's even, oh, so here will be 3. So that can't intersect if my maximum point is at 4, can it? Okay, so state the number of solutions, and the number is zero solutions. So then, again, sometimes my drawings aren't as accurate. You can see here very clearly that there are no solutions between minus pi and pi. Okay, and it's really... Um, really important that you make sure that we write that as a sentence okay especially in between this interval because that's what it's asking for okay so to sketch y equals minus one plus sec of two x first of all we know that sec of x equals one over cos of x so if i just do a quick sketch of cos in the interval between 0 and 360. Okay, we've got 360, 180, 270, 90, 1 and minus 1. Okay, and then if we think now when we draw sec, it's going to meet um, oh, sorry, everyone. It's going to touch at one. And it's going to go up. Going to have a asymptote at the line ninety. Sorry, x equals ninety. Then we're going to have an asymptote at the line x equals two seventy. 
and then they're going to meet there again. So there's our graph. So just to draw that so that we can see it a little bit better, the graph of sec is going to look like this with minimum and maximums at one. So now what it's asked us to do, and if we think about functions, sec of 2x, it's um, affecting x. And what we're going to do to all of our x coordinates, we're going to half them. Essentially, it's going to be squished. So we're going to fit two lots of this graph in our period between 0 and 360. So the next step is to draw sec of 2x. So now we're going to have our x and our y. And if you think we're going to, all of our x coordinates are going to be halved. So here we have 90, where our asymptote is, this is now going to be at 45. So we're still going to have a minimum at 1, asymptote at 45. This asymptote is at 270. Half of 270 is 135. five. Then we're going to continue the graph. This is 360. If you think if we were to continue on, 360 plus 90 is 450. So our next asymptote would be at 450, which is 225. Then if I'm just carrying on drawing, and let's see, you can see here we still have a pattern where we're adding 90 each time. 225 plus 90 is 315. This is 315. I've drawn this. I keep drawing my x-axis. And then if we carry on, 315 plus 45 is 360, which we're going to stop because that is our interval between 0 is less than or equal to x, which is less than 360. Now, the next part of the graph says y equals minus 1. So we're going to be shifting the graph up or down. We're now going to be shifting it down. So what I'm actually, in fact, going to do is we could draw this again. But it took me quite a while to draw this. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to delete my x-axis. And if we're shifting this whole graph down one, my x-axis, if you think this is the point 1, if I'm moving it down, it's now going to be touching the x-axis. So my x-axis is now, in fact, going to be here. And I need to make sure that this touches the x-axis at 360. So this is 145, 135, 225. 315 and this is 360 degrees so a nice and easy transformation and I can rub out the rest so I think it's really helpful to do this step by step even if you do it rough so that you can see exactly what's going on and now we have the graph of y equals minus 1 plus sec of 2x Okay, sorry everyone, just to make this clear, this is a dash for the thing. This is 45 degrees, because if we have a look at the original one here, the asymptote's at 90. Remember, we're halving 
all of my x coordinates. So this is 45 now, okay? 270, we half it, 135. Okay, so please can you head to page 52, exercise 3B, and choose a couple questions um, to sketch and make sure you mark your work. So moving on, we're going to be using sec, cosec, and cot. So they're either provey type questions or solvy type questions. So here are a few from the textbook. Now we need to make sure that we know um, a few rules. So we know that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one. We know that tan of x equals silly cow, the sine of x over the cos of x. Um, and I think this is all we know right now. And we obviously know that sec of x equals 1 over cos of x. Cosec of x equals 1 over sine of x. And we know that cot of x equals 1 over tan of x, which we could rewrite as 1 over sine over cos, which is cos of x over sine of x. These are, these are probably my favourite type of questions because all we're doing is substituting and rearranging the formula. So here we have simplify sine of theta times cot of theta times sec of theta. So step one, I'm going to substitute in um, and rearrange. Sine of theta is sine of theta. Cot of theta, now this has already got a sign in it, and I know that sec is 1 over cos, so I'm going to straight away, instead of putting 1 over tan of x, I'm going to use cos x over sin x. So that's times cos theta over sine theta, and then sec theta is in fact 1 over cos, so it's multiplied by 1 over cos theta. Now, I could, if I wanted to, work it out and write it so I have a numerator and denominator. For the purpose of this, I'm going to show you this, but we should be really trying to get into the habit of being able to cancel if we're multiplying. So, here on the numerator, we're going to have sine of theta times cos of theta times 1, which is sine of theta times cos of theta, over sine of theta times cos of theta, which is sine theta cos theta, which cancels to give me 1. Useful. Part B, simplify sine theta cos theta bracket sec theta plus cosec theta. So my sine theta cos theta, I'm going to just leave outside the bracket for a second and I'm just going to focus on inside the bracket. So sec theta is 1 over cos theta plus cosec theta is 1 over sine theta. Now, if I need to add these fractions, my, dominate, uh, my, dominator, sorry, my denominators need to be equal. So I'm going to multiply um, 1 over cos theta by sine theta over sine theta, because sine theta over sine theta equals 1, so I'm not changing the fraction, the quantity of the fraction. So I'm going to get sine theta over cos theta times sine theta. And again, on this side, I'm going to multiply by cos theta over cos theta. So I'm going to get plus cos theta over cos theta sine theta. We now have the same denominator, so I'm going to have sine theta plus cos theta over cos theta sine theta. So now that I've sorted out what's in the bracket, I'm going to multiply that by sine theta cos theta. 
So sine theta cos theta is multiplied by sine theta plus cos theta over sine theta. Oh, sine theta multiplied by cos theta. Now, again, normally I would straight away go into cancel them out, so we're left with sine plus cos. But just to make sure everyone's happy, um, sine theta cos theta is over 1. And when we multiply fractions, numerators multiplied by numerators, denominators multiplied by denominators. So we're going to have sine theta cos theta, sine theta plus cos theta. All of that is over sine theta cos theta. Now we have a common factor on the numerator of sine theta cos theta. We have a common factor on the denominator. So my final answer equals sine theta plus cos theta. Okay. And then part C is prove. Okay, so we've just been simplifying. Now we've got to prove. We need to prove that cot theta cosec theta over sec squared theta plus cosec squared theta is cos cubed theta. <coughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to start on the left hand side. So the left hand side of the equation and I'm going to start Okay, so left hand side equals cut. I'm going to um, rewrite as one over tan theta. Because I'm proving, I'm going to make sure I'm going to show all the steps. This is multiplied by cosec, which we know is one over sine theta. Now this is divided by. 1 over sine squared theta because sec squared, sorry, I was doing cosec. Sec squared is cos, so cos squared theta, and um, plus 1 over sine squared theta. Okay, so I've substituted in everything to begin with. I'm now just going to have a look at my numerator and we know that tan can be written as cos over sine so we're going to have cos theta over sine theta multiplied by 1 over sine theta and on my denominator um, I'm going to have 1 over cos squared theta plus 1 over sine squared theta I want to add them they need to have the same denominator. So I'm going to multiply sine squared theta over sine squared theta and cos squared theta over cos squared theta. Now I need to make sure I write everything down. So I'm going to have sine squared theta over sine squared theta cos squared theta. Um, plus, and then I'm going to have cos squared theta over sine squared theta cos squared theta. Okay, and then again, so now my numerator, I'm going to do cos multiplied by 1, which is cos theta, and then sine squared multiplied, sine theta multiplied by sine theta is cos theta over sine squared theta. So this is my numerator divided by, now on the denominator, I have sine squared theta plus cos squared theta all over sine squared theta cos squared theta. Now again, this is going to simplify so we can do one of two things here. First of all, 
cos theta over sine squared theta, because what we're doing here is we have this numerator over the denominator, and they're both fractions. Well, I can write that as that is divided by sine squared theta plus cos squared theta over sine squared theta cos squared theta. But we know that sine squared plus cos squared equals 1 from the identity that we've used before. Now, we know when we divide, we're going to do state change flip. So cos theta over sine squared theta multiplied by sine squared theta cos squared theta over 1. So I'm now going to have, if I multiply my numerators together, um, sine squared theta multiplied by cos theta times cos squared theta is cos cubed theta all over sine squared theta multiplied by 1, which is sine squared theta. Sine squared theta and sine squared theta factor on the numerator and denominator. So we then have equals cos cubed theta. Now, this equals the right-hand side. Therefore, proved. So, alternatively, instead of um, rewriting it like this, from this step, you could multiply the numerator and the denominator all by sine squared theta cos squared theta to get rid of this denominator here. OK, either way is fine. Personally, I prefer multiplying by this, but I wanted to make sure we could all see exactly what was going on. So there we have our example questions. So here we go. I want you to try a few questions now. Pause the video here and then play back the video to have a look at the answers. So here we go, sec of x minus cos of x is our left-hand side. So left-hand side equals 1 over cos x minus cos x. So to take these away, they need to have a common denominator. So 1 over cos x take away cos x. I need to multiply cos x by cos x over cos x. So I'm going to have cos, sorry, 1 over cos x minus cos squared x over cos x, which equals 1 minus cos squared x over cos of x. Now, we know that 1 minus cos squared x, remember, sine squared x plus cos squared x equals 1, is sine squared x. So that equals sine squared x over cos x. Sine squared x is, in fact, sine x multiplied by sine x over cos of x. Now we know that we could also rewrite this sine of x times sine of x over cos x. Well sine over cos is tan. So I could write rewrite this as sine of x over 1 multiplied by sine of x over cos of x. Sine of x over cos of x is tan. So we're going to have sine x multiplied by tan x, which equals sine x tan x, which equals the right-hand side. Therefore, proved. Okay. Moving on to question two. Um, here we have a double bracket. The first thing I'm going to probably do is expand it and then, um, no, I'm not. I'm going to rewrite cosec and cot, then expand. 
We want sine of x, so I know cot is 1 over tan x, and I'm going to write that as cos over sine, but I want to show that it's 1 over tan. So I'm going to have 1 plus cos x multiplied cosec is 1 over sine x um, minus 1 over tan of x. Okay, remember this is our left-hand side. So that actually equals 1 plus cos of x, um, 1 over sine of x, minus sine x over cos x. Nope, that's completely wrong. It's 1 over that. It's cos of x over sine of x. Now, they actually have the same numerator on top, so this is great, actually, because now I'm going to have 1 plus cos x. So they have the same denominator, so I'm just going to have 1 minus cos x over sine x. Okay, so this is, in fact, I could just multiply this now by 1 multiplied by this which equals 1 minus cos x over sine x. Then I'm going to have cos x multiplied by this, which is plus cos x minus cos squared x over sine of x. Okay, now they're over the same denominator, so I'm going to simplify the numerator. So I'm going to have 1 um, and I'm going to have minus cos x plus cos x, which is redundant, um, 0, OK? If I simplify the numerator, I've got 1 minus cos x plus cos x, which is 0, minus cos squared x, minus cos squared x all over sine x. Now we know that 1 minus cos squared x is because we know that cos squared x plus sine squared x equals 1. We know that that's sine squared x. So sine squared x over sine x. Now remember, sine squared x is in fact sine of x multiplied by sine of x over sine of x. So they have a common factor of sine x. We're going to cancel them from the numerator and the denominator, which gives us sine of x which equals the right-hand side, therefore proved. Now, you may have done this a different way, and sometimes there is more than one way to answer a question, and that's completely fine. As long as you're using the identities, your algebra manipulation is correct, and you get to the right-hand side, that is okay. We can see here Dr. Frost did question two slightly differently where he expanded out the double brackets first. Um, probably got there faster than I did, actually. Um, and then he's um, still managed to get the sine um, x, which is amazing. Again, it doesn't matter which one you choose. You will find sometimes that one way does work, one way doesn't. Some ways are quicker than others, and that's completely fine. So... This is a type of question where we've got to solve, okay? So we just had a look at the prove questions, the solve questions. Now, step one, um, it says solve the following questions in the interval in degrees. You need to change your calculator straight away to degrees, okay? So um, we need to solve this between zero is less than or equal to theta is less than or equal to 360. Sec of theta equals minus 2.5. So we know that sec of theta is 1 over cos of theta equals minus 2.5. So cos of theta equals 1 over minus 2.5. So that means that cos of theta equals... Um, minus 0 0.4. 
Okay, so now if I find shift cos of minus 0 0.4, I get 113.578 degrees. If we just stick to um, three significant figures for the purpose of these questions. So that means cos of theta equals 113.6, which is in fact 11. 114 degrees. Okay, now we know that is not the only solution in the interval between 0 and 360. So we're going to have 0, 180, 360, 90, 270. So let's have a look. We're having 114 degrees. Roughly somewhere here. So we're going to reflect that in essentially this line, the x axis. We know that that's 114, so 360 minus 114 is 246 degrees. 246 degrees, and there you go, we found all the solutions between the interval of 0 and 360. Part B, cot of 2 theta. So we know that cot of theta is 1 over tan of 2 theta equals 0 0.6. So tan of 2 theta equals 1 over 0 0.6, which is 5 over 3. Okay, our interval is also 2 theta. So what if we had to do, we had 0 is less than theta is less than 360. It now says our interval is 2 theta. So if we're multiplying theta by 2, we have to multiply 0 by 2, which is 0, and 360 by 2, which is 720. So now we know that tan of 2 theta equals 5 over 3. So that means 2 theta equals the inverse tan of 5 over 3, which is 59.0, which is 59.0 degrees. Okay, so we're doing three significant figures. Now, using our cast diagram. So here we have C. A S T. Okay, so we know we've got roughly 60 degrees. Okay, so there we go, it's 59. We know this is 180, 0, 90, 360. Remember, we should be familiar with cast um, from Pure 2. If you do need any help with this, um, I can create some extra videos. So we know this is going to be 180 plus 59, which is 239. So that's our next angle. But again, we know we're going between 270. So if you think we, oh, sorry, I've just made a huge mistake. That's not huge, actually. I think 360 there, that's 270. 270, 360. So we start again at 360. If we go all the way around, 360 plus 180, this becomes 540, and this is 720, because we're going to go back round now. So then 360 plus 59 is going to give us our next solution, which is in fact 301 degrees. No, it can't be 301. What am I doing? I've taken away on the calculator. Sorry, everyone. As you know, I'm not very well today. Um, ah, 419 degrees. Okay. Then, if we carry on, where else will it cross? 540 plus 59, which is 599.
and then if I go back to round it doesn't it doesn't cross anymore so now we know what two theta is I can work out what theta is by halving all of these values so we're going to get 59 divided by 2 which is 29.5 significant figures 239 divided by 2 is 119.5 to three significant figures that's 120 419 divided by 2 is 209.5 three significant figures 210 degrees and 599 divided by 2 is 299.5 three significant figures that's 300 degrees so there we have our four answers okay now the next question i'll just pause it if you need to take a picture okay here we go so solve cot theta equals zero in the interval zero is less than theta is less than equal to two pi step one change your calculator it needs to be into radians oh. I don't know what's happening on my calculator. Ah, there we go. Um, radians, okay, because cot we know is one over tan theta equals zero. Okay, so what we did previously was we then said, okay, well, tan theta equals one over zero. Uh oh. So we know we can't reciprocate zero here. Okay, this is not allowed. So when in doubt, draw it out. Let's have a look at the graph of cot theta equals one. So step one, just gonna quickly draw turn. Okay. So there's my tan graph. Okay, now I'm going to draw cot. Okay. And we know. So here we have it. Um, oh, I should probably label it as well okay so we know that this is pi pi over 2 3 pi over 2 and we have 2 pi okay so i've got the graph of tan and cot here so let's really think about this when does cot of theta equal zero well cot of theta equals zero here and here now, when cot of theta equals zero, this is actually when tan of theta, I think tan's the black graph, tends to infinity. So when cot of theta equals zero, tan of theta tends to infinity. So that means then that theta equals the asymptotes of pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. Okay, test your understanding. Please give this question a go and make sure your calculator is now back in degrees. So, solving the interval, zero is less than or equal to theta is less than 360. If we have a look here, we have three theta. Okay, so we need to change this interval to equal three theta. If we change theta to three theta, what have we done? Multiplied by three. We need to make sure then we multiply everything else by three. So this is zero is less than or equal theta is less than or equal to 360. So that means I need to multiply everything by 3. 0 times 3 is 0. 360 times 3 is 1080. So this is my new interval that I'm going to be using. Um, 
this is in degrees, so please set one, change your calculator to degrees so that you're ready. So, cosec of 3 theta equals 2. Okay, we know that cosec is 1 over sine of 3 theta equals 2. So that means that to find sine of 3 theta, we need to do the reciprocal of 2. So sine of 3 theta equals a half. Now, when we inverse sine of a half, I think it's 30 degrees. Yeah. Perfect. So how I get the first one is I do sine, so the inverse sine of a half. Okay, so that means 3 theta equals 30 degrees. But this might not be the only value because here's a bit of explanation. So here we have the sine graph and this is just between 0 and 360. This is just between 0 and 360. And we want to find out when does sine 3 theta equal a half? Okay, so a half is roughly here. If I was to draw a line across, well, it equals a half here, which is 30, but also here, which we need to figure out. Now, we can use symmetry here, and we know it's going to be 150, okay? Um, but between 0 and 360, we've got one period. This is between 0 and 1080. And the reason we do it like that is because what happens is, is 3 theta means we've divided all our x coordinates by 3. So to make our lives easier, within this 0 to 360 period, our sine graph actually looks like this. There's actually three periods of 0 to 360. That's what it means if you think about the transformation that we've done. We actually have three. But I don't really know where this point is, this point, this point, this point. But I do know that we are going to have one, I'll do a different colour, one, two, three, four, five, six. I should have six solutions. So to make my life easier, what I do is I multiply everything by three. I find my six solutions. Uh, sorry, I don't multiply everything by three. I multiply my interval by three. I find six solutions and then I divide it by three and it will give me these three answers. So how I do that is I use my cast diagram, okay? And cast diagram, if you wanted to, you could draw out the, um, sorry, x and y at zero this is par uh, it's not we're not even in pies are we 180 360 this is 90 this is 270 so what's going on here well if i was to draw 30 degrees if you think about you know this is zero this is 90 30 degrees is roughly here isn't it Okay, so here is 30 degrees. Now, because we have a positive value of, we have a positive value equals a half, okay? So, to find where else sign is positive, it's also between 90 and 180. So, here I have, we do a reflection in that line, and this is also 30 degrees angle. Right, so now if I think about it, okay? Between, if I start at zero, I go up, my first angle is 30. Check. I go, I keep going round. This angle is actually 180 minus 30, which is 150. Okay, brilliant. Now, okay, I keep going, keep going round. Keep going round. I get to 360. Do I stop at 360? No, because I'm going to stop at 1080. So I keep going round. Then this becomes 360 plus 30, which is 390. So now if I think as well, 
if I've now got to 360, 360 plus 90 is 450, plus 90, 540, plus 90, 630, plus 90, 720, okay? I'm actually, I'm going round again. So, remember, I was at 360, I've already got to this angle here, okay? We keep going round. So then I keep going. Get my pen back out. Okay, my next angle I hit is this one. This one's 540 minus 30, which is in fact 510. But I still haven't got to 1080 yet, so I don't stop. So I keep going round, 540, 630, 720. Okay, I'm gonna change color. Something drastic. Um, sounds good, this orange. Okay, now, once I get to 720, 720 plus 90, this becomes 810. This becomes 900, 990, 1080. Okay, I know when I get to here now, I have to stop because I've reached my 1080. So if I carry on around, so I'm now, at 720, I get to here. 720 plus 30, 750. And then I keep going round till I hit another line, which is my next angle here. This is 900 minus 30, which is in fact 870. And then I keep going round until I hit another line or I hit the maximum, which is 1080. Here we go, stop. I've hit 1080 and I didn't hit another line. This line, this pink line that I'm hitting, is my sine curve, okay? This is what I'm saying, you know, when I say hit the line, when does it intersect, okay? The TAS, not TAS, sorry. The CAS diagram is just used as a nice, simple way to do this without having to draw the graph each time. So, now this is what free theta equals, but I wanna know what theta equals, so I'm gonna divide everything by Three, because if I've got three feet to equals all of this, if I divide everything by three, I'm gonna get 10 degrees, 50 degrees, 130 degrees, 510 divided by three, anyone? 170 degrees, 250 degrees, and 290 degrees. And that is my final answer. And if you have a look um, back to this graph over here, Okay, if you think this is 180 in the middle, okay, so you can see here, this one is 10, this one is 50, this is 130, this is 170, this one is 250, this is 290. That's where we are. Okay, please check your answers on this page. So we should have had sine of three feet equals a half. We know that three feet equals, um, we change our interval to 1080 and we find where it crosses up into that point, and then we have to divide by three. So there's two new identities you need to know. So we know that sine squared x plus cos squared x equals one. If we divide everything by cos squared x, okay, cos squared x over cos squared x over cos squared x. Well, sine squared over cos squared x is tan squared x. Cos squared x over cos squared x is 1. And 1 over cos squared x is sec squared x. So imagine what would happen now if we multiply everything by sine squared x. So sine squared x over sine squared x is one. Cos squared x over sine squared x is one over tan squared x, which is cot squared x. And one over sine squared x is cosec squared x. So you do need to know these, but if you forget them, just remember to divide by sine or cos to them, remember them. You'll find the amount of times we have to use this, this is something that you're not going to forget. Okay, so 
If I divide everything by cos squared theta, uh, cos squared x, sorry. Okay, so every term I'm divided by cos squared x. Okay, what's sine over cos? Tan. So if it's sine squared over cos squared, it's tan squared. What's cos over cos? 1. What's cos squared over cos squared? 1. What's a million over a million? 1. If we have the same value over the same value, it becomes 1. Great. What's 1 over cos? Sec. So what's 1 over cos squared? Sec squared. There's our first identity. So, here we have some questions. Prove that. And again, we're going to substitute in and prove that the left-hand side equals the right-hand side, okay? Or we could prove that the left-hand side equals something and then manipulate the right-hand side and the right-hand side equals something and they both equal the same something. So what you should notice here is cosec to the power of 4 minus cot to the power of 4. Here we have the difference of two squares, okay? So this is cosec squared theta minus cot squared theta multiplied by cosec squared theta plus cot squared theta, okay? And this is what the left-hand side equals. Okay, so I've already forgotten those identities that I've just showed you. So what do I do? I'm going to work them out. So we know that sine squared theta plus cos squared theta equals 1. If I divide everything by sine squared theta, I'm going to get 1. And then cosec squared theta divided by sine squared theta is cos squared over, ta over sine squared, which we know is cot squared, so plus cot squared theta. And then 1 over sine squared theta is cosec squared theta. So actually, cosec squared theta minus cot squared theta equals 1. So cosec squared theta minus cot squared theta is 1. So this equals 1. So 1 lots of cosec squared theta plus cot squared theta. Okay, cosec squared theta, I can rearrange, I can rewrite that as 1 over sine squared theta plus cot squared theta, which is cos squared theta over sine squared theta. So on my numerator, I have 1 plus cos squared theta over sine squared theta. Now, I know that sine squared theta is 1 minus cos squared theta. So 1 plus cos squared theta over 1 minus cos squared theta, which equals the right-hand side. Oh, that was very lovely. Therefore, proved. Okay, then. Question two. Okay, so. Four cosec squared theta. Minus nine. equals cot theta. So ideally, we want to see if we can convert this all to cot theta. Okay, let's see what we know. Um, we know from up here that 1 plus cot squared theta equals cosec squared theta. Okay, so we're going to substitute. Instead of cosec squared theta, I'm going to substitute in 1 plus cot squared theta. So I'm going to have 
4 bracket 1 plus cot squared theta minus 9 equals cot theta. I'm going to expand. So 4 plus 4 cot squared theta minus 9 equals cot theta. I'm going to move everything over to the left hand side because I can see a quadratic. So I'm going to have 4 cot squared theta minus cot theta and then minus 9 plus 4 is minus 5 equals 0. Okay, I do have a quadratic and I know I can solve a quadratic. So if I factorise, um, we're going to have 4 cot squared theta and cot squared theta minus 5 plus 1. Let's just double check if that works. 4 cot squared feet times cot squared, sorry. That's just 4 cot feet. So 4 cot feet times cot feet is 4 cot squared feet. Minus 5 times 1 is minus 5. Minus 5 times cot feet is minus cot feet. 4 cot feet times 1 is 4. Minus 5 plus 4 is minus 1. Perfect. And this equals 0. So that means. When does this bracket equal zero? And that is when cot theta equals five over four. And when does this bracket equal zero? And that is when cot theta equals negative one. So now I know that cot theta equals five over four means that one over tan theta equals 5 over 4 to tan theta equals 4 over 5. Then if cot theta equals negative 1, tan theta equals 1 over negative 1, which is also negative 1. I now need to solve this in the interval between 0 and 360. So my calculator is in degrees and tan inverse tan of 4 over 5 is 38.7 38.7 degrees tan of negative 1 is minus 45 degrees Okay, perfect. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to use my cast diagram to find the other solutions. So here we go. Now we know this is 0, 180, 90, 270. So we've got 38.7. That's going to be 38.7. So we're going to have 180. Plus 38.7 is 218.7. So we know that theta equals 38.7, 218.7 to three, significant figures is 219. Then we know we have minus, minus 45, okay, for the next one. So if that's minus 45, we're going to also have put it here, minus 45, so that's 45 degrees. So 190 plus 45 degrees is 135 degrees. And then again, if I come all the way round, remember this is 360 minus 45 degrees. 360 minus 45 is 315 degrees. So there we have it. Four solutions. And we've solved the equation. Okay, so now I'd like you to pause and test your understanding, please. 
Okay, so here we have a question. Right, step one. Write down anything in relation to sex squared, tan squared. There is a formula. What is it? Okay, so the formula that I know is tan squared plus one equals sex squared. Oh, I forgot to write my x's in. Okay, so I look at this question and I think to myself, I've got a sex squared, I've got a sec. Okay, it's beginning to look like a quadratic. But then I've got a tan squared. That's all right, because I've got this formula. So I'm going to rearrange this formula. So this formula becomes tan squared x equals sex squared x minus 1. So instead of writing tan squared theta, I'm going to substitute in sex squared theta minus 1. So here we go. Let's start this question. So we're going to have 3 sex squared theta plus 3 sec theta equals 2 lots of sex squared theta minus 1. Okay, now all I'm doing is algebraic rearranging, expanding, simplifying, moving everything to the left-hand side. We should all be happy with this, okay? Your sex squared, imagine it's an x squared. Your sec, imagine it's an x. Okay, it just takes longer because we've got to write more letters. Okay? So, here we go. So, 3 sec squared theta plus 3 sec theta equals 2 sec squared theta minus 2. Okay, I'm just going to take this over. So, 3 square sec squared theta minus 2 sec squared theta is sec squared theta plus 3 sec theta, and then if I move minus 2 over, I'm going to get plus 2 equals 0. What do I have? A quadratic. Isn't that incredible? So, I'm actually going to factorise. Okay. Sec theta plus 2. Sec theta plus 1 equals 0. And let's really think about this. Uh, sec times sec, sec squared. 2 times 1, 2. Sec times 2, 2 sec. Sec times 1, 1 sec. 2 sec plus 1 sec, 3 sec. Okay? Whew, this is like a real tongue twister trying to explain this. Right then. So now we need to solve our quadratic. Okay? This is all we're doing. The only thing that's different is remembering this formula and substituting this in. Now we just have a quadratic. So here... Sec theta equals minus 2. Sec theta equals negative 1. We know that sec is, in fact, 1 over cos. So, um, right, sec theta equals negative 2. Sec theta equals negative 1. So, to find cos, we do the reciprocal. So, cos theta equals negative 1 half. Cos theta also equals negative 1. Okay? The reciprocal is 1 over minus 1, which is still minus 1. Brilliant. Now, we forgot to do the most important thing. Step 1. It's in pies. Get your radians on. Okay, so... So we're going to get our radian on. Great. Right, now... Um, I have my cast diagram, which I'm going to put over here to the side. Okay, C-A-S-T. We're just going up to 2 pi. Great. This is pi. This is pi over 2. And this is 3 pi over 2. Perfect. Okay, so now to find, I'm going to do one side at a time. Okay, cos theta equals minus a half. So theta equals, so shift cos negative a half is 2 over 3 pi. Let's think about what 2 over 3 pi is. It's definitely bigger than pi over 2. So 2 over 3 pi roughly here. This angle is 2 over 3 pi. Okay? Now, if you think about what would we normally do, normally it'd be in the positive section, but it's a negative number, okay? So, where would we also 
find that. Um, when do we, what do we do with A and C? We reflect it in the horizontal line. So we reflect it again. Okay, and this is 2 over 3 pi. So we know that this little angle here is 2 over 3 plus what makes a whole one? Yeah, pi over 3. So this must mean this is pi over 3. Okay, so now if I really, if I start at my start at the beginning, if I go to 0 to my first line, I get 2, pi, 2 over 3 pi. And then if I carry on, I hit my next line. This is where I intercept again. Which is, in fact, pi plus pi over 3, which is 4 pi over 3. What's a whole pi plus a third of a pi? 4 pi over 3? Yeah. Okay, then. So, brilliant. That's it. And then if I carry on going around... I stop at 2 pi, which is what it told us in the question, and we don't want to go any further. Awesome. Right then, cos theta minus 1. Now, if I do think of cos of minus 1, it only hits at one place, which is pi. The shift cos of minus 1 is pi. How do I know that? Think about the graph. Cos looks like this. Minus 1 is our minimum point, isn't it? And we know that that's actually 180, which is in fact pi. So pi is the other answer. Now, to be honest with you, we should really write them in ascending order of numerical value. So theta equals 2 over 3 pi, pi, and 4 over 3 pi. Because if you think about it, okay, this is a quadratic and it's saying, where does this quadratic cross? Okay? So we are going to have more than one solution. Okay, first. Okay, so cos x squared x, we're going to transform form into 1 plus cot squared x. Great substitution. Amazing. So we're going to have two lots of 1 plus cot squared x plus cot x equals 5. So we're going to have 2 plus 2 cot squared x cot x equals 5. Now what am I going to do? Yeah, I'm going to rearrange it. So 2 cot squared x plus cot x minus 3 equals 0. Now what am I going to do? Factorise. Amazing. Cot squared x. Two lots of that. Cot squared x. Um... Minus 1 and 3? No. No. Minus 3? No. No, I don't think it factorises nicely. It does? I don't think it does. Plus 3 minus 1? Oh, yeah, it would be plus 3 minus 1. Oh, they're not squared at all. What is going on? Sorry, everyone. Okay, so then we're going to get cot of x equals minus 3 over 2 and cot of x equals 1. Okay, now to find tan, we've got to do the reciprocal. So that means tan of x equals 2, negative 2 over 3. And tan of x equals 1. Okay, because the reciprocal of 1. We would now then solve it. Okay, please check your answers and that you've got them correct. Have a look through the working out.
here. Dr. Frost is really good at showing all of the steps. Pause it now so that you can check. So now what I would like you to do is go to um, page 60, please, and do exercise 3D. If you just have a look at some of the questions. Remember, they get harder through the chapter, so if you do that. We will carry on with the rest of this chapter um, in tomorrow's lesson. Please. OK, so we need to know how to actually sketch the inverse trig functions, OK? Now, what do we know about sketching inverse functions? Does anybody know? It is a reflection in the line. Yes, it's a reflection in the line y equals x. Incredible. So, draw your line y equals x. And then reflect it. Okay. Okay. Um, I'm just going to do that how it should look here. Okay. And then, so once you've reflected it, you need to change as well. Don't forget, this is going to be one now. Okay. And if you think about it, what it's actually going to look like is this. It's going to look like this now. Okay. So if you think that's going to carry on. So you see? So you'd reflect it, wouldn't you? Yeah? So try and do the inverse of arc cos and arc tan for me, please. Best thing to do is just to memorise this. Okay, or bring a mirror with you into the exam hall so that you can reflect. Okay, so arc sine is sine to the minus one of minus two over two. And work it out. It says work it out in radians. So shift sine minus root two over two, which is minus a quarter pi. Um, Sine minus one of minus, oh, sorry, this is cos. Um, inverse cos to the minus one is just pi. And then we're going to have tan to the minus one of root three. Oh, I should know this. It is third pi. Perfect. So, this is um, a typical problem, okay? Given that y equals cos to the minus 1x, express arc sine x in terms of y, okay? First of all, you look at this, you think, what on earth is happening here? Okay, step one. So y equals arc cos of x. So actually, y equals cos to the minus 1 of x. How do we get rid of cos to the minus 1? We cos both sides. Oh. So, cos y equals, I'm just going to write this for purposes, but do not write this in your exam. Cos inverse cos, which it's just going to be cos y equals x. Yeah? Just like imagine, remember, when we do the inverse of cos minus 1, that's because if you think about, do you remember Sokotoa? Sine of x equals O over H. How do we find x? Inverse. Sine to the minus 1 equals O over H, okay? So now we know that cos Y equals X. Then it says express arc sine in terms of Y. 
So if x equals cos y, then arc sine of x is arc sine of cos y. It says arc sine x. We just figured out that x is actually cos of y. Yeah? Yeah? So we have arc sine cos y. How does that help me? What can I now do? Right. First of all, sine. Okay. This is pi. Cos. This is pi. Okay. We already know something that connects them. What do we know that connects pi and cos? Sine and cos. What do we know about sine and cos? Pardon? It has shifted. Cos is a transformation of sine, isn't it? Yeah? By how? Minus 90. Cos of x minus, no, plus pi over 2. Because we write the opposite in the bracket, don't we? Yeah? Okay, so if we have cos of y equals x, express arc x in, in terms of y. So cos of y equals x, but cos of y is actually, so now think, go backwards. So we already know that as a fact. Think of what sine is in relation to cos. This is going to be cos, right, if we had cos of x, how would we write sine? We'd write sine of x, and if you think we're going to move it plus, so this is going to be minus pi over 2, isn't it? Okay, but we are in terms of y. So this changes to sine of x minus pi over 2. Equals x. So now, x minus pi over 2 equals the inverse of sine, which we write as arc sine of x. This is supposed to be a y. And then, that's the answer. Yeah. Okay, then part B. Hence evaluate arc cos x plus arc sine x. Give your answers in terms of pi. Okay, arc cos x. Right, we know that arc sine x is y minus pi over 2. So we just need to know what arc cos x is. So arc cos of x equals y so we know that cos of y equals x cos of x no x equals cos of y Okay, this has got something to do with what we did here with the graph. Would it be y plus pi over 2? Arc cos of x. Y plus pi over 2. Oh, I'm sorry, everyone. I've gone bad today. So, that's the end of trigonometry. <laughs> Yeah. <gasps>
pure mathematics. Right, so what we're going to do is... Um, we don't have long for the rest of the lesson. What I'll do is I'll send you the link to this video, okay? I am going to re-record some of it again uh, when I'm a little less do-lally.